morning. This is Daybreak on Citizen Television. Thank you for staying with us. Now it's health and lifestyle segment and holding on for Willis Raburo. In studio with me is Mohamed Malim. He is a clinical director at Boeing Healthcare and we are focusing on autism. Mohamed, thank you for making time. Thank you for having me. One question that keeps on coming is uh, at what point uh, would uh, the holders of the institution of parenting, the mother and the father, um, be in a position to identify the early signs of an autistic child before we talk about the medication process? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me today first. Um, so the topic of autism is, um, is a major one, is a public health issue mm -hmm. at the moment. First of all, I will twist your question a little bit uh, differently. Okay. And I'll say, uh, in terms of awareness, how will parents become aware and know how to look for signs of autism? Mm -hmm. So usually autism uh, is a neurodevelopmental condition uh, and it, it's usually detected before the age of three years old. Mm -hmm but they, they are, there are signs at, at even before the, uh, the age of one year. Mm -hmm. So parents need to be aware and, you know, in terms of information point of view and from us, you know, public health um, practitioners and, you know, uh, other people who are in this space, I think we should provide information to parents in terms of looking at red flags mm -hmm. or what are the areas that, you know, I, I need to consider uh, so that I can go to my, you know, uh, a doctor or my, my local health um, officer or whoever that is closer to me kind of to discuss these issues mm -hmm. first because I think autism is one of those <coughs> conditions that have been misunderstood and it's also one of those uh, situations where people don't know a lot. Even today, if you don't know what you're looking for, um, there's no way you can go and find a solution for it, mm. okay? So mostly parents will get to know difficulties uh, around what they may sub about their children, yeah. mostly after the age of two, mostly, yeah. where they will find issues around uh, uh, language development yeah. uh, becoming uh, difficulty. Mm -hmm. They will find, even before that, actually, I might say, between the ages of zero and one year, you might find uh, some children, uh, parents might say, you know, my child was not even latching during their, 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 their breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. They're very irritable, some, <coughs> some, some of the children, you know, in terms of eye contact, uh, you yeah. expect, you know, even, even a, a, you know, a four months, three months old baby mm -hmm. to kind of give you that eye contact, to kind of look at your, look at your face and, and kind of understand that. And that's where usually a typically developing child, yeah. a baby, mm -hmm. there's all that, you know, um, uh, things that they do in terms of physically touching, looking, you know, uh, feeling their mommy yeah. uh, and all that. So normally you might find some ch children at that age, uh, sometimes they might be very irritable, they mm -hmm. might not be able to latch during breastfeeding, they might not be able to uh, have a lot of even feeling issues, some of them uh, in terms of even the intake of food, of, of food and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, that is at, at a very, you know, subtle level. Yeah. So it's also very difficult for a parent to mm -hmm. know that. Yeah. So a parent uh, as well, there is, always hope as a parent, you know your child will get better as they develop. Mm -hmm. So n that's why you cannot confirm really a full diagnosis until after the age of two years. And with that, there is a number of screening um, uh, tools that are available for parents can access to, okay. you know, whereby you just need to checklist things. At, and at then healthcare centers? At, at he actually, some of them, at healthcare centers, and mm -hmm. some of them you don't even need to go to healthcare centers. Okay. Some of them are readily available online, but you need to know what, where you're looking. Okay. Yeah. But, but when we talk about uh, such an embryonic stage in life, yeah. that is between zero to two years, yeah. um, then what are the behavioral tendencies that parents have to look out for? And in mentioning that not necessarily going to healthcare centers, are there remedial home measures that parents can institute at a tender age to stave off the consequences of uh, autism as the child continues to grow? Um, again, I'll, I'll go back to about what the meaning of autism. Mm -hmm. So usually autism is described as a neurodevelopmental condition and is, uh, is, is a lifelong yeah, condition. Of course, we do what we call early intervention, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what you, where you're coming to. Yeah. So I'll say parents need to know what the early signs and early interventions they need to do kind of to support their child to develop more typically as any other child, okay. but as well as understanding that they're actually different because autistic children or autistic people 
are different by their nature in terms of how they think, their brain development, and the rest of it, okay? And that's where societal attitude also need to change and also understand autism is not a condition to be fixed. It's not like a disease <coughs> or, or something like that. Autism is neurodevelopmental, and at the moment there is a whole discussion around how people have neurodiversity, which we are all different in different ways and we have different abilities and stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, coming back to your question, uh, parents, first of all, is about awareness of understanding, okay. you know, when should I go and get help in terms of doing more assessment, okay? But there are a few checklists to go through, okay? okay? There's something called uh, sensory sensitivities, okay? We all, when we develop uh, from the beginning, from actually um, when, when a baby is born, the mm -hmm. first thing they do, they try to look for breast, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. they, they look, they lose their, their, their touch system, mm -hmm. okay? They lose their smell, okay? That's how they understand their parent. That, that's how they know uh, danger. That's mm -hmm. how they will know this is a feed and this is not a feed, okay? Uh, they use their, their eyesight in terms of kind of scanning the environment mm -hmm. and all these things. So if you find as a parent that your child, you know, you maybe the child is six months old, you, they, they're expected now at that point at least to track items um, in the house, like in terms of following things, and then your child is not follow, is following those, he's fixated on only one thing, uh, it takes a lot of time for them, even when you, you call a baby, you know, you, you expect a, a baby to a reaction. Mm. There's no reaction, okay. maybe it takes a little bit of more time for, for them. So again, that might tell you, maybe I need to do a hearing test at this mm. point. Mm. And in our institution as well, there is the well baby clinics and all these things as well at the level of the public health uh, nurses, and, and, and local, we should invest more into hearing tests. Mm -hmm. We should invest more into, you know, looking at those developmental checks. Is mm -hmm. my child delayed, you know, <coughs> in different aspects, be it motor <coughs> delayed um, or do it, you know, communication mm -hmm. delay, mm -hmm. there's even interaction delay. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things will give parents an opportunity to say, oh, I feel like, you know, something is amiss here. And parents are, know very well they have that gut instinct that actually something is not really typical yeah. about my child. Mm -hmm. And at that's the point, don't wait for somebody else to tell you. Go and, and kind of do further investigation and see where your child is because once you know and understand where the child, mm -hmm. your child is in terms of their situation, you'll be able to get more help. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's really, really an, an important factor uh, mm -hmm. to consider there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and there are questions. We'll, we'll go to the medication process and yeah. what normally happens at yeah. the medication center stage. Yeah. Yeah. It's still within the home setup. Yeah. And uh, there are critical roles that moms do play or yeah. mothers yeah. Uh, because it's uh, through breastfeeding that uh, children gain immunity and intelligence. Yeah. Uh, and that is the biology how God made us, which yeah. is natural. Yeah. How important is the pillar of mother in the study of the kid, understanding the early signs, the red flags, before even you go to the medication. And is that awareness created? Is that awareness enough in the context of the Kenyan household situation from your studies and surveys that you have done? Um, thanks for that question. I think that's a very important question. And it brings back the issue of knowledge and understanding and awareness, okay? We are putting a lot of, all, a lot of uh, pressures on our, on our mothers but they also need information for them to know, mm -hmm. okay? Because a lot of our focus has been in, understandably in other maybe contagious diseases, you know, malaria and other big public health issues. And that has been the, the, the pool of public policy. Mm -hmm. So they haven't very much a kind of um, awareness and education and actually even policy around, you know, uh, you know uh, disability related issues and issues around empowering parents and empowering families to understand more about their children. Mm -hmm. And this is where child development is really important that every parent, you know, even investing in parenthood requires you to at least, you know, understand a little bit of the parent, uh, child development, you know, the main milestones that, you know, are there. So if you know, we all know like growing up, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, my, a, a child is supposed at, at birth, they completely dependent, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. As they grow, they're about three months old, they start to smile, okay? At maybe six months old, they can sit now and start manipulating toys, you know, at nine months to one year, they can now start moving around, they can socialize, they can play, you know, they can, you know, listen out even to your name and, and respond back, you know. Those normal development kind of chats and milestones we call, that is what we need in all our public health institutions. Mm -hmm. You know, a full chat of normal development, uh, like where 
away, you go to your, your local clinic, you go to your local hospitals. Okay. It's all there for mommies to see, mm -hmm. uh, you know, handouts where they can see. At, uh, at this stage, I expect my child to do mm -hmm. ABCD, so that at that point, they will know when to seek, uh, you know, um, help okay. if they know my child is not <coughs> developing typically mm -hmm. as per the, the, the milestones. And mm -hmm. the milestones are arranged, so they are not specific. <coughs> okay. And children develop no, uh, differently, okay? okay? And that's that's very important to know. So sometimes you might see a child walking at maybe uh, one one year, or some, some children even walk before that. Another child can walk almost at the two-year at, at the two old birthday. So they're all arranged that maybe at some, some point there's nothing to worry about if they're within the range, mm -hmm. but as well if your child is a little bit much more delayed and you know there's a delay there and you understand that, there are strategies now you can use to support mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So I will say back to your question, understanding the child development is really important okay. and that one can only be pushed through public health messages. Okay. And they are also parents or people who pin this on, uh, you said it's a neurological process, yeah. they also factor in or tend to blame because of the process of denial, yeah. either through during the birth process or defection yeah. or genetics. C can this be, is it, is it scientifically proven or does science point to the same? Now, the issue around autism, the causal you know, the causation of autism is, is, is a major debate, mm -hmm. number one. But from scientific point of view, there have been a lot of research done in terms of wh why people get autism, okay? So there's a number of strands mm -hmm. that have been identified and research is still ongoing. But the take home is, there, is, there hasn't been one clear mm -hmm. kind of causal mechanism that has been put forward by science until now. Mm -hmm. So research is going on. So there's three major, th there's two major things that have been looked into. One is genetics, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of genome kind of uh, research that is going on and it has been identified. Not all children with autism or not everybody with autism, mm -hmm. but there is a pattern of genetic mechanism uh, that has been identified with a number of autism that is, not, that is different from other neurotypical people mm -hmm. like me and you who uh, don't have autism. Mm -hmm. So there has been that genetic mechanism, okay? And then the other factor is what is called environmental factors. And there has been, you know, research done into maybe even natural pollutants. There have been research done into diets and mm -hmm. different things, but all of them are still non-conclusive at okay. the moment. Mm -hmm. But one thing I will say, and this is a, a big area that has there's been a big misinformation, mm -hmm. is about the role of vaccine. Mostly the MMR mm -hmm. vaccine and the, you know, the measles and mumps rubella vaccine. That has been proven by WHO and all the scientists that had actually the study that kind of mentioned that mm -hmm. was actually misleading people. It did not have the rigor that a research process should go through mm -hmm. to come with that. Mm -hmm. And there has been in situation, I think some communities where there was big outbreaks of mis measles and rubella and mumps because yeah. people avoided to take those vaccines because of this misinformation. Mm -hmm. But definitely, you know, there has been a relationship between those two. So mm -hmm. it's about nature and nature. Okay. okay? So the nature bit, the genetics has been spoken about, yeah. but there hasn't been one specific genetic strand okay. that has been identified to say this one causes. And yeah. give out a conclusive yeah. report to Ex that effect. Exactly. Okay. Just, just, just to finish about that point, mm -hmm. there are also other predisposing factors that have been mentioned around maybe, you know, a mommy's age or maybe what if they had a, a particular, maybe, maybe something like uh, diabetes or some other medical condition or some medication that they have, but even that one is not completely conclusive. Mm -hmm. and, and does age also come into that bracket uh, in terms of <clears throat> giving birth? Yeah, so they are saying this, you know, this what, what is called a predisposing factor mm -hmm. to, to a condition. Yeah. So it's not a fact, but it's a condition that either can or cannot be. Mm -hmm. So there has been and that is also pocket of research yeah. out there that says the, old, the, 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 the older you get a child, there is a, also a higher possibility, mm -hmm. but it's not a fact. We, have, we know <coughs> like majority of even older 40 to 50 yeah. you know, age yeah. year old uh, people who have had kids typically developing. So mm -hmm. that's very important too, but the predisposing factor is some factors that mm -hmm. either can work or cannot work. Okay. So that can be, has been a factor. And mm -hmm. also what the parent has gone through during pregnancy in terms of that environmental yeah. kind of mm -hmm. uh, piece. So those are the two things. Okay. Yeah. Let's come to the medication question. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we talked about um, zero to two years and the development of the child yeah. and the process. Yeah. For an adult then, yeah. What are the signs to look out for? Because we talked about the 
the kid and, and the development process? Yeah. What are the signs to look out for now, an adult? Um, autism is diagnosed uh, under th three different strands, and we have um, a, a kind of a, a protocol that has been put together by uh, two institutions which are well regarded in the world. One is uh, pushed by an institution called American Psychological Association. So they have something we call Diagnostic Statistical Manual, mm. which kind of gives you a criteria for most of those psychosocial kind of uh, conditions, mm -hmm. okay? So autism has been included in that. For you to be diagnosed with autism, there is three main things that is looked into. Mm -hmm. One is what we call social communication okay. and social interaction. Mm -hmm. They're sometimes bundled together as one, mm -hmm. but social communication and social interaction are two different things, okay? And the word social is really important. It's not about language development. Mm -hmm. uh, the social communication means, you know, when you meet somebody, you know nonverbal cues with yeah. somebody's angry, somebody's happy. You take those cues before you say what you say or before what you do. So mostly people with, aut uh, with autism, they have difficulty in terms of understanding that that social cue yeah. before the for, for communication point mm -hmm, of view, mm -hmm. which impacts on their s social interaction. Okay, and that's really important to know. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is what they, they have what is called uh, repetitive uh, behaviors. Okay. okay, for example, uh, and stereotypical behaviors. Mm -hmm. So you might see a child maybe um, uh, has an interest in one particular toy, or maybe they love, let's say, for example, some. A lot of children with autism like maybe dinosaurs, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So a child might be so much interested in dinosaurs, they'll tell you all the different types of dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. They can give you a whole lesson about mm -hmm. dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. But if you pull them out of that yeah. dinosaur conversation mm -hmm. to something else yeah. completely, that just shuts down. That child shuts down com completely. Or the child might have other, we call it repetitive behaviors around maybe flapping their hands, looking themselves, you know, so much intensely looking at something, yeah. you know, something like that, okay? And then those are the three main ones. And of course, there are other kind of additional things, what you call sensory uh, processing issues. Mm -hmm. So where somebody is really sensitive to, to, to touch, some people are very sensitive to noise. Mm -hmm. So if you are in a very noisy environment, you are in a supermarket, you know, that child will not function there. Mm -hmm. Even if you are an adult, you're working in an office where there is a lot of maybe open plan office, yeah. everybody's on the phone, mm -hmm. that is no-no for you. Um, so people pick and choose when to go. Airports and all these things where things are messy, you know, it's very difficult for them. Mm -hmm. So they, there is those sensory sensitivities that are really heightened mm -hmm. more than, you know, uh, the typical, the mm. typical that you... Depending that we, on the environment. Depending on the environment, yeah. one. And because sensory processing is also an internal thing. Sensory processing is very much so, you're taking information through your brain, yeah. you process that information, and then you have a response, okay? So that response should be, is supposed to be measurable to the situation, okay? I'll give you an example. Um, and, and some situation, if you are maybe in a, in a, if you're a football fan, you are in a, in a football pitch, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It is acceptable for you to scream and shout yeah. and, and, and do all that yeah. and, and, and accept all the noise yes. around you, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And then you kind of change your processing and you adapt your behavior yeah. based on the environment yes. you are in. Yes. But first of all, you get in that information through your mm -hmm. brain and you mm -hmm. process and say, I am in a football stadium. It's acceptable for me to scream and shout. You know, and sometimes even people swear or whatever, yeah. and people don't mind about that. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in some situation, you're in a classroom in a library, okay? You have to adjust your, your behavior yes. based mm -hmm. on the context. And, and the environment. And the environment, mm -hmm. okay? So some children with sensory processing difficulties, they have that difficulty of processing uh, sensory information, yeah. and then the information that comes back becomes an issue. So when, whenever they are in maybe a football pitch or in a, in a very busy environment, mm -hmm. they are overwhelmed by what is going there unless they go outside in you know, their own space mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, okay. yeah. Okay. So there is all that sensitivity that is there that people really need, need to understand that they are different that way. So that as a parent, if you know your child is sensitive, as a teacher in school, you know this child is really sensitive to noise. You make sure that they're in a classroom environment that is much more quieter. Okay. You know, you make sure that you put in strategies for them to function. It's not that they cannot function, yeah. but they need an environment that is really suitable for them to function. Okay. Yeah. Now, you have said it's um, a lifelong issue. Yeah. And then, say for example that uh, the detection was made at the age of two years. Yeah. Then, going by the life expectancy, yeah. for example, 67 to 70 years, yeah. so it's going to be a whole life. Yeah. Is it going to be 
how, how will the medication be instituted? What changes at what stage? Because this child from two years has to attain puberty and then has to mature at some point within the 20s, yeah. then make up his family from 30s, yeah. up to 40s where now that is the flat line yeah. where a lot of uh, aspects in your life changes in terms of your physical outlook and also your emotional intelligence. I mean, what will be the difference in terms of the medication at the different stages of life I've pointed out? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm glad you asked that question. That's part of also the awareness generation around mm -hmm. autism and autistic people. Okay. Now, like I said, autism is 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 meant as a neurodevelopmental condition. So which means you will have it. You'll have some trend of uh, of autism mm -hmm. uh, all of all of your life. You only need you know situations and strategies for you to support mm -hmm. your day to day. Okay. Um, before I answer this question, also comprehensively. I want to go back to the issue of medication, okay? So there isn't one specific medication uh, or a medication kind of uh, package for people with, or, with autism. Having said that, like any other typically developing person, people with autism also have medical needs, yeah. okay? They might be, they, uh, they also have other behavioral needs. Maybe, for example, uh, some children will have very heightened aggression, okay? Mm -hmm. And aggressive behaviors or maybe behaviors that in our eyes looks like outside the typical uh, behaviors that we expect in a, in a society because ex society also you know has its own boundaries and what they think is is um, is right and wrong okay so f for some children number one remember i talked about social communication difficulties yeah. so if a ch if somebody has some language or social communication difficulties uh, and then they are in a, in a situation so wh whereby their they, their behavior maybe somebody's not able to understand them well. So what happens mostly in a growing child, they throw a tantrum mm -hmm. because their language is not understandable by the other person. Yeah, uh, so the only way they can communicate maybe is to throw a tantrum or to be aggressive to themselves. Sometimes there's something called self-injurious behavior. Mm -hmm. Some children kind of hit themselves yeah. almost as a way of saying, I want to communicate with you, but you don't understand me. That is where we come back and say supports now. We don't call it medication. Mm -hmm. Now we call it the support structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are we going to do as a society to support these children? Now, there's different models that we have been using in, in medicine. Okay. There is the medical model, which is very much so around medication and around making sure that, you know, the doctor gives you some kind of a package of care and you follow that. Okay. In the world of disability, you know, now that, that model has, has, uh, is not really working well. Mm -hmm. People now have moved into what we call a social model of disability, a human right model of disability, where it's actually not the person with disability that has an issue. It's actually the society that is putting barriers to okay. this person to function. <clears throat> so what we do, coming back to your question, lifelong wise, it's as society to make sure that we adapt and we diversify the way we, we work in the schools, in employment situation, in uh, outside in, in, in the community, like in the, in the shopping centers and mm -hmm. the rest of it, mm -hmm. to support these people and to be aware that they have people who, who kind of think differently than us, uh, who have different abilities than us, and kind of work with them to support them and kind of give them the opportunity to also prosper in this world, okay? Um, and with that, mm -hmm. it's scary when we say it's lifelong, but there is a lot of successful people who are autistic, mm -hmm. successful people who are dyslexic, successful people who are, you know, have different uh, neurodiverse condition, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, ADHD, okay. hyperactivity, <laughs> and all these things. What they need is a nurturing environment, support system, structures from the beginning, okay? Early intervention, that's why we're talking about early intervention, when they are younger, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. where they get different intervention, be it uh, therapeutic, like around occupational therapy, physiotherapy, speech and language therapy, yes. psychological intervention, psychiatric mm -hmm. intervention, uh, you know, educational based interventions. So there are different models that support these children mm -hmm. uh, in, in the school environment. If somebody is nonverbal, you yep. give them tools mm -hmm. to support them to communicate. Okay. Language is an important thing, but language is not the only thing for people to communicate mm -hmm. with. And that's important. Okay. And, yeah. and what is your final word on communication? Um, to as you have said, yeah. it's scary to, to, to use the term lifelong, yeah. but all the same acceptance must come from the society yeah. and also as the medications, med the medication process is uh, taken care of. And then what's your message to the society? It's here with us. Yeah, it's here with us. Okay, oh, the, um, my message to the society is going to be twofold. So one is at the basic societal level, like me and you, parents working at the micro level. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we need to understand and kind of invest more into understanding what autism is and not just autism, any other condition that is different, okay, special, children with special needs generally to understand who they are and they are actually people like us. We are just a, a conglomeration of human beings with different abilities and the disabilities are caused either internally because of some impairment that we might have, plus the environmental condition that is affecting us not to participate. So we need to invest more into understanding and awareness raising to make sure that every family yeah. will, able, will be able to know that this is something that is uh, is known everywhere and I don't have to hide my child in the house. If I need to get support, there are supports out there. Let me go and find supports okay. and, and my child will be able to develop typically like any other child. Mm -hmm. That's one at the level of the community and okay. we understand one another and, and also we talk about another. And then there is the also the, the, at the level of the state in terms of the policies to implement because everything also should come from mm -hmm. up down. It's much more widespread, okay? So like Kenya is a signatory to the United Nations you know, um, convention for people with disabilities, okay. which actually ask for measures to be put in place by the state, not just policies on the shelves, okay. measures to be put in place to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity mm -hmm. to, uh, an equal opportunity to, to be able to participate in life, in social, political, economical, and environmental life, wherever okay. they are, okay? okay? So the message, both at, the, at the, our institutions to make sure that we have policies and also measures in terms of uh, you know, institutions to support and also at the local level whereby we avoid stigma and we understand what is autism and all other neuro device conditions so that we can get early intervention help and support our children to be the citizens, the model citizens that mm. we want. Mohamed Malim, yeah. thank yeah. you for your time and shedding light on such an important topic yeah. that uh, the public had many questions on. Many thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Thank Mohamed you. Malim is the clinical director at Boeing Healthcare here in the county of Nairobi. And thanks to you too for watching the broadcast starting from 6 a.m. with my colleague and with my colleague Safin Achieng Ouma and I here. Tomorrow on Thursday will be Budget Day special coverage beginning at 6 a.m. until 10 a.m. Then the Swahili team will be taking over to 2 p.m. where my colleague Trevor Mbija will be joining us also for the analysis of what will be happening in Parliament as the CS. Professor Njuguna Ndungu will be making the Kenya Kwanzaa's first budget before a Parliament tomorrow as parliamentarians wait for that a moment we'll be here to brief you on that many thanks for watching us and waking up with us here on the broadcast this morning thanks for watching good morning